in the portion of Shemos, we find how Moses goes to Pharaoh and tells Pharaoh, let my people go, because God has told me, Bini B'chayri Yisrael, that the Jewish people are my firstborn, O Israel. So God calls the Jewish people his firstborn. And we know that the Torah tells us further in chapter 13 in the book of Exodus that there's a mitzvah to sanctify the firstborn child, Kaddish li kol bachar, and therefore because the first child is to be sanctified, therefore says the Torah you are to redeem this first child to the Kohen. In other words, really, the firstborn male child belongs to the Kohen. However, God says you can redeem the child for five silver dollars, five shekolim, and then you can buy back your child from the Kohen. That is the mitzvah of Pidyon Haben, redeeming the firstborn child. And what is the reason for this, says the Sefer HaChinuch, Number one is to tell us that hakel shaloi, by the fact that we give our firstborn child to the Kohen, which really means to God, and the Kohen, the priest in the temple, represents God, we are making a declaration that really everything belongs to God. And if not for God, we had nothing. And with all our toil, with all our sweat, with all our might, we can, in the end, have nothing. And the fact that we produce, and the fact that we are successful, and the fact that we have blessing, is only because of God's blessing, and therefore we give our first and best to God. That is the first reason why we give the firstborn child to the Kohen, and then we redeem it back for five shekolim. The second reason, says the Chinuch, is to remind us of the great miracle that happened when God took us out of Egypt, that on the final night, God made the tenth plague, where he smit all the firstborn of the Egyptians, and he speared the firstborn of the Jewish people. And therefore, really, those firstborn belong to God. However, God gave us a mitzvah to redeem the firstborn child. So this is the basic pshat, the basic reason of why we have a mitzvah to sanctify the firstborn child. And halachically, when does this take place? When does this performance or service take place that we actually go to the Kohen and we say, here Kohen, here's five silver dollars, five shekolim, says the Alter Rebbe, it takes place after 30 complete days. In other words, on the 31st day after the child is born, we perform this task of redeeming the firstborn child. In contrast to the bris, to the circumcision, which is done on the eighth day. In other words, not that the child has to first be eight complete days old, but rather on the eighth day, it could even be seven and a half days afterwards. In contrast to the Pidyon Aben, the redemption of the firstborn child, we first have to wait 30 complete days, 30 24 hour days, and then after that, we fulfill the obligation of redeeming the firstborn child. This mitzvah only takes place when a woman gives birth to a baby boy and it has to be the first opening of her womb. If, God forbid, she had a miscarriage beforehand, then she is not obligated to redeem this firstborn child. And similarly, if she was married before and had other children, even if this is now a firstborn to her new husband, this child is not fulfilling or does not undergo this mitzvah of Pidyon Habim. This is the basic pshat. And it's also brought down in many svarim that one who participates in this ceremony of the Pidyon Haben 
is given the credit of having fasted paid Dalit Tanesim, 84 fasts. That's how holy this ceremony is, that one who participates in this ceremony receives the blessings and the credit for have actually fasted 84 different times. This is the pshat, the simple practical halacha pertaining to the redemption of the firstborn child. What is the rem is, what is the hint of this mitzvah? So, the father redeeming the firstborn represents Almighty God. God is our father, Avinu Malkeinu, our father, our king. And God promises us, by the fact that you are redeeming your firstborn child, I will eventually redeem you because you are my firstborn child. Just like I redeemed you from the hands of Egypt, so too I will redeem you in the future redemption from the hands of the nations of the world. So that is the remez. Every time we fulfill this mitzvah, we are reminded that God too will redeem us. And this is not only true on the macrocosm, but also true on the microcosm. There's a letter to my grandfather, Rabbi Jacob J. Hechtel, blessed memory, from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, in the summer of 1946, before the Rebbe became Rebbe. And he writes a letter to my grandfather on the 22nd day of Tammuz, where my grandfather was celebrating the Pidyan Haben for her, his first-born son, Rabbi Sholem Berhecht. And there the Rebbe writes in a letter to him, you should know that the concept of redeeming the first-born child is the concept of how every Jew must emulate God. Just like God is merciful, so too we must be merciful. And just like God redeemed the firstborn children of Israel, so too each one of us has this obligation to redeem the firstborn child. And what does that mean? Being that every Jew is called the firstborn child of God. So each one of us has the obligation to make sure that our brothers and sisters are not lost amongst the nations of the world, but rather we connect them with the living God and the living Torah. And he goes on to say to my grandfather, Rabbi, Rabbi Jacob J. Hecht, the blessed memory, that you were appointed by my father-in-law, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, to fulfill this task in redeeming the firstborn sons. My grandfather had many responsibilities in the National Committee for the Furtherance of Jewish Education. One of them was we ran the release time program. In those days, they took out 10,000 children a week from public school to give them an hour of Torah teaching once a week. And many other things that he did, Ante Shmad, to bring out children who were lost in cults and things like that. So he said to him, the Rebbe says to him, that you were appointed my, by my father-in-law to fulfill this task. And therefore, you should be a kli, you should be a vessel that is truly worthy of this task and to fulfill this task properly. So this is the idea of remez. The remez is that each one of us has the obligation to redeem our brothers and sisters who are called the firstborn of Almighty God. What is the drush, the homiletics? So we find an interesting story in the Talmud. In the end of the tractate of Psachim. The Talmud says like this, that the Rab Simloi once came to a Pidyan Haben party. And they asked him a question. They said like this, Pshita, it's obvious that the first bracha that you make, Hashem Kiddishonu, of Tzivanu, that God has commanded us and sanctified us with the mitzvah of Pidyan Haben, the father of the child makes the bracha. However, the bracha of Shechiyanu, the second blessing, Shechiyanu, Vikimanu, Vigiyanu, Luzman 
that you have given us life and you have sustained us, that we have reached this very opportune day, this opportune time to fulfill this mitzvah. Who makes the bracha? Does the Kohen who receives the five shkollim make the bracha? Or does the father who's giving the five shkollim make the bracha? He wasn't sure what the answer was. And he went into the base medrash and he was told the following that Avi Haben Mivarech Shtayim. The father of the son makes both blessings. That was the response. So the question is, as the Rebbe asks, why does the Gemara have to tell us, Pshita, it's obvious that the father makes the first blessing, but who makes the second blessing? Simply say, Rabbi Samloi, who makes the second blessing? Is it the Kayin or the father? So the Rebbe explains that really the question is based on the following dilemma. Upon whom is the mitzvah of redeeming the firstborn child? Is it on the son himself, the baby, who is now 31 days old, that really he has to redeem himself from the Kohen? However, he cannot, he's a baby. So now we put the burden of responsibility onto the father. Or do we say no? That the father was given this task, he was given this mitzvah. And therefore, the father has the mitzvah. Upon whom is the mitzvah? On the son or the father? And the Rebbe says that the nafkamina ledina, which means practical speaking, the difference would be when the baby is now bar mitzvah. The baby becomes an adult. Now he's an adult and he was never redeemed on 31 days. So if he was not redeemed after 31 days and now he's an adult, upon whom lies the responsibility? Is it upon the son or the father? So if we say the mitzvah originally was on the son, it's just that he couldn't do it. Now that he's bar mitzvah, he's an adult, and he wasn't redeemed, he now has the obligation to go redeem himself. And his father lost the opportunity and the merit to fulfill the mitzvah. However, if we say it was the father that has the mitzvah, and now the father did not fulfill the mitzvah, and the son is now already an adult, so really the father still has the mitzvah to do it. However, comes along the Torah and says that the son can also do it. He can redeem himself. But really the obligation is upon the father. And this is really what the Gemara is telling us. Pshita, it's obvious that the father makes the bracha. Upon whom is the mitzvah? The father. Therefore the father has to make the bracha. And that's obvious. And therefore this answers the second question. That we say, Because you might think the Kohen should make the blessing because the Kohen receives benefit. He receives Hana. He derives a certain pleasure from receiving the five shkollim. So therefore maybe he has to make the Shekhyanu. But being that we establish that pshita, it's obvious that the father makes the bracha. Because he's saying, Because the father says, God, you commanded me with the mitzvah. The mitzvah is upon the father. Then for sure the father makes the shechiyanu. Because who makes the shechiyanu upon the individual that has the obligation? That is the person that makes the bracha shechiyanu. <clears throat> so this is the drush. The drush is... That upon whom is the obligation to redeem the firstborn child? It's not the child, it's the father. And therefore the father makes two blessings. What is Soid? What does the esoteric level of Torah teach us? The question is, who makes the bracha? Is it the father or the Kohen? According to Kabbalah, the father, Av, 
represents a level that is beyond creation. Because Av, father, alludes to the level of Chachma, of intellect. And similarly, mother alludes to the level of Bina understanding. And we're told, Alapayim Shona Kodma Torah the world preceded, the Torah preceded the creation of the world by 2,000 years. Which is Alaf Chachma and Alaf Bina, representing the attribute of intellect, Chachma and the attribute of understanding Bina. Because both Chachma and Bina transcend nature and transcend creation. They are above and beyond the reality of nature. The Kohen, on the other hand, is known as Isha Chesed, a kind person. Kindness is connected with creation. The seven days of creation allude to the seven Midos, the seven emotional attributes. As we say, each day of the week was created with a different attribute. Sunday was created with chesed, kindness. It's a day off. Monday, gavura, severity. That's why it's a very difficult day getting back into the everyday world, the business world. Tuesday, finally, is tefedes. is already, you calm down. It's now a beautiful day. So every day of the week is connected with a mida, an attribute. So the Kohen alludes to the attributes of nature. And therefore the question is, who makes the Shekhyanu? When Mashiach will come, and the Jews are going to be redeemed from this exile, will the Father make the Bracha? Will the Av make the Bracha? Or will the Kohen make the Bracha? In other words, no doubt God himself will take us out of exile. Like God took us out of Egypt. But the revelations that will take place, when we leave this exile, will it be on a level of Av, a father, which is beyond nature? Miracles and wonders that we never saw before? Or will it be on a level of Kohen nature that will be transcended beyond the world, but yet it will be manifested within the nature of the everyday order? And the answer is that the Father of the Son makes both blessings. That we will truly see wonders and miracles beyond nature. Because the Father will make the bracha. This is the level of Yisoy, the esoteric level of the Torah pertaining to redeeming the firstborn child. Now let's take it to a fifth level. What does Hasidus say about the redemption of the firstborn child? So we find that we have a Yerushalmi, the Jerusalem Talmud, says like this, because Joseph was sold by his brothers as a slave for, for 20 silver pieces. Therefore, says the Jerusalem Talmud like this, every one of the Jewish people must redeem their firstborn child for 20 silver pieces, which equals five shekolim. So why the number five shekolim? Why five shekolim? Because Joseph, who was considered to be Jacob's firstborn child, it was the firstborn child to Rachel, his favorite wife. He was the Ben Zekunim. He looked like his father Jacob, and Jacob gave over all his Torah knowledge to Joseph. He was the real firstborn child. And because he was sold as a slave for 20 silver pieces, which is five shkolim, so too, Every one of us, we have to redeem our firstborn child for five shkol. Number two, says the Yerushalmi, because they took these 20 silver pieces and they split it amongst 10 sons. So each son got two silver pieces, which equals a half of a shekel. So too the Jewish people have to give every year a half a shekel to the Holy Temple to buy sacrifices. 
So the question is, what's the connection between because Joseph was sold, therefore we have to redeem our firstborn child? In other words, the fact that each one of us has to give a half a shekel to the Holy Temple, it makes sense. Because the Torah says that by giving a half a shekel, it's koifer nafshoi. You are redeeming your soul. In other words, we made a mistake. We sinned. We sold our brother into slavery. We now need to redeem ourselves. And we got to give a half a shekel to the Holy Temple. But why, because Joseph was sold as a slave, does the firstborn child become holy? Kadesh li kolbukhar. Every firstborn son is to become holy. And now you have to redeem this holy son from the Kohen. So we answer this through a teaching of the Zohar. The Zohar says an amazing thing. We spoke about it once before. The Zohar says, why is it that Joseph had to be pulled down to Egypt by becoming a slave? Why couldn't Joseph simply go down to Egypt together with his brothers in freedom? And the Zohar says the following, an amazing thing. Because his brothers sold him as a slave, now Joseph became a slave to his brothers. Now that Joseph is a slave to his brothers, he goes down to Egypt and he becomes the viceroy of Egypt. When he becomes the viceroy of Egypt, there was a famine and there was no money in Egypt and the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, buy us as your slave. We have no money. We will become your slaves. So in other words, the Egyptians became the slaves of Joseph and Joseph was the slave of his brothers. So in essence, the Jewish people in Egypt were not slaves to the Egyptians. How could the master be a slave to his slave? So in essence, we were never slaves to the Egyptians. Only externally, but not internally. And therefore, even though historically no slave ever left the land of Egypt, However, the Jews were able to walk out in broad daylight. So therefore we understand the following. That on one hand the brothers of Joseph sinned. And therefore they have to pay for it. And therefore because of that sin we are required to give every year a half a shekel to the Holy Temple. And we do this at Ev Purim. On the fast of Esther, we give a half a shekel. On the other hand, the fact that Joseph was brought down into Egypt as a slave in order that the Egyptians should become his slave, in order that ultimately the Egyptians are now the slaves of the Jewish people, this is a very positive thing. This is why the Jewish people become sanctified. And because of this holiness, we now redeem the firstborn son. So what is the, the message? What is the teaching of Chassidus? The lesson of redeeming the firstborn child is, not only do we have an obligation to go and redeem our brothers and sisters from amongst the nations of the world by educating them and inspiring them to do more Torah and mitzvahs, not only do we strengthen our belief that God will one day very soon take us out of this exile like he took us out of Egypt, that God will redeem us, his firstborn child. But furthermore, we have to realize and we have to understand that in essence we are not in exile. We are not limited to the constraints of Golos. Even though our bodies externally might be in exile, but our will and our souls and our desires are truly beyond exile. And they can never be exiled. 
And therefore a Jew should never feel limited being in Golos, being in exile. Because just like Joseph, who was a slave to his brothers, who became the viceroy of Egypt, therefore subsequently caused all of Egypt to be the slaves of the Jewish people, so too we are not the slaves of our exile, but on the contrary we are the master of our own fate. And this is the message of the pigeon of the Bukhar, that not only should we redeem ourselves externally, but we should know that we are truly redeemed already internally. And we hope and pray to see the physical redemption with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days.